Good evening, YouTube. This is Logan Albright. It's a cold, wintry night here in Washington, D.C., so I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about uh, a really amazing book that I just discovered this year. I can't believe I hadn't heard of it sooner, but it sort of uh, goes with the season, I think. This is the, the Gormenghast trilogy by an author called Mervyn Peake, and these are some truly weird books that uh, somehow have escaped my notice for all this time. So I want to try to bring them to a larger audience. This is a beautiful Overlook Press hardcover edition that contains uh, all three novels in the trilogy. The three novels are called Titus Grown, Gormenghast, and Titus Alone. But the uh, entire series is known as the Gormenghast trilogy. Really the first two novels are kind of a standalone story and then the third one is a bit tacked on at the end. The third one is really strange because the author was going through uh, some dementia and it was near the end of his life when he wrote those and it required some heavy editing. So uh, I think the third one you can either take or leave, but the first two are fantastic. Great plots, great characters. The story is essentially about this sprawling kingdom called Gormenghast, which takes place all in one gigantic castle. The castle is basically the size of an entire city, and there's just sprawling halls and, and different chambers and weird rooms and libraries and cobwebs, and it's just it's got a great atmosphere. Um, one of the things about me that's a little strange is I love gloomy, gray, kind of slightly morbid things, and this is right up my alley in that respect. Um, the main character is named Titus. He's not really the main character, but uh, he's the title character. We'll call him that. He starts out as a baby. Basically, the, the book begins when he's born. He's the heir to the castle of Gormenghast, and the whole um, the series kind of tracks his growth and what goes on with him. So he's he's a, an infant and a child for mo much of the first book, grows up a little bit in the second book, and is kind of comes into his own in the third book. But the really compelling thing about the book is just how the world he creates, just the uh, the amazing whole universe that's all within this one castle and all these bizarre characters who wander around. In a certain sense, it was a critique of uh, British society and British uh, monarchy, because everyone in the castle was obsessed with just these really arcane, tedious, pointless rituals, and everything has to be followed to a T. There's uh, people whose entire job is just keeping track of the rituals and making sure they're observed, and that's somewhat comical, but it's also a kind of satire on the, the British monarchy. Uh, the main thing is just the compellingness of the story and the setting, the vividness of the writing. I actually discovered this book on tvtropes.com, which is one of the best sites on the internet. Um, I was reading about purple prose, which is, most people will know, is overwriting. It's using flowery language, and it's generally considered to be a bad thing. I happen to like it in a lot of cases, because I like big words. I like uh, flowery use of language. And this was listed as an example of purple prose, and I think uh, Mervyn Peake's use of language is, is fascinating. He does, I learned a lot of words from reading this, because he uses big, arcane words, and he describes things in extravagant detail. If you don't like scenery porn or uh, you know long descriptions of things without a lot of action, you probably won't enjoy the book. But if you like lovingly detailed descriptions of every nook and cranny, every costume, um, every uh, corner of the castle, you'll love this. Um, so I, I recommend it if you're into uh, fantasy. It it's, reminds me a little bit of... Uh, it's, it's classified as fantasy, but there's no dragons, there's no magic, there's no elves... Um, it's very difficult. It was written around the same time as The Lord of the Rings, but it's very, very different because there's there's really nothing fantastical in it. But for some reason, it really does feel like a fantasy novel at the same time when it's really just a satire of a, a dynasty, uh, a family that lives in a castle. But it's overlooked. People don't know about it, and I highly recommend picking it up and checking it out. Um, again, the book is Gormenghast, the Gormenghast Trilogy, Mervyn Peak, available at fine booksellers everywhere.